Hello and welcome to the Rock Your Voice podcast. Vocal coaching tips that will transform your voice, interviews that will inspire, industry guidance, and so much more. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. Today, I'm talking about a really interesting topic. It's not necessarily a how-to or a coaching topic, but it is something that does come up quite frequently, more as an undertone of what's going on with certain clients that I'm working with. And that topic is, am I enough for the industry if I am just the singer? Now, it's really interesting because obviously it's a hugely competitive industry. Um, You've got to be the top of your game to be successful. Uh, But do you really have to also be your own accompanist? Do you have to also be an actor? Do you also have to be doing all these other things to be able to be uh, successful or consider to validate yourself as a contributing member of the music industry? And I am really passionate about saying, yes, yes, you are. And we're going to dig deep into a few reasons as to why I feel this way. But I think, first of all, we have to break it down right to the beginning of your journey. If you are, and I'm going to keep saying just a singer, and I use quotation marks for that because obviously you're not just the singer. And we're going to look into why there is so much about that. But if you are, think back to the beginning of your journey. Think about all of the work, the training, the effort, the time, the money that you have put in to yourself and your career as just being a singer. Okay, I went through this when I was in music school. I went and obviously did the singing stream of the course. And by the end of it, yes, I had bought a guitar. I had started writing songs on guitar. And don't get me wrong here. I feel like having musical vocabulary and musical skills to be able to create and be able to express your ideas to other musicians is really, really helpful. I don't think it's necessary to be an epic guitar player or a phenomenal pianist or uh, an arranger or a producer. I don't think you need to be as high at your skills as those things as you are as the singer. Okay, be the best vocalist you can possibly be. Um, so yeah, we're going to think back on this journey. So so there was me in music school and learning everything I could about my voice, but obviously I wanted to grow as a writer. And so I did take up guitar. I I didn't, well, I was self-taught or I really hassled everyone at music school to teach me stuff in our spare time. Be like, what are these chords? How does this work? How do I make this sound? Um, I used my resources very wisely and, um, and learned the basics. Like I said, to just have a really simple vocabulary of the the basic chords that I needed to create songs that I was writing. And that allowed me to go to guitarists or piano players or whoever and explain like, this is my song idea. This is, these are the chord changes. This is the arrangement and show it to someone who is a professional in that field. And they were able to obviously perform it and play it way better than I ever could and could also come up with different sort of chord structures and really cool, um, tweaks to the arrangement that would make it more, um, what's the word? Just, just more, uh, intelligent (laughs) really. Um, and more advanced and more mature, shall we say, uh, from a musical point of view than where I was coming from with my writing. And that's, that's that certain thing. Seeing the living daylights out of the songs, But if you were to put the guitar in my hands and I was to do my own show and support myself, uh, the voice would have been sacrificed. The guitar would have been probably quite painful for anyone in the audience to have to suffer through. Uh, But yeah, it's, it's all about being okay with giving the jobs to the right people. And if you're a bit like me, a bit of a control freak, hence starting my own business. think I'm very good at working for other people or doing what I'm told so I was like I'll just do this myself so I had to be really careful in music to be like no Emma you cannot do this all yourself and the higher up you go in your career in the music industry the better it is and the smarter it is for you to hand off these responsibilities to the people who are really good at what they do um so 
really think about that. The effort that you've put into your voice, your training, the time you've put into the practice, the time you've put into strengthening those muscles, the, the effort that you as a voice professional have put into yourself to be able to take that role. There's also the other side of the role of being the front person is connecting to emotion, to being able to relate to an audience, to be able to share your stories with an audience, being able to perform, to be able to stand on stage confidently, to be able to express your musical ideas and share your stories and get, let people leave feeling a certain emotion and feeling a certain way and being fulfilled that they were at an awesome show. They don't want to sit and watch someone having to sacrifice their voice and fumble through crap on guitar and be like, that was a real mediocre show. Whereas if you as just the singer have been given the honor of being able to actually employ someone else, which in itself is huge. If you are providing employment to other musicians, yes, thank you for doing that. It's, it's not easy to get to the point where you're making enough money to provide employment to other people. But even if it's just like, Hey, I have a small coffee shop gig and we're going to split the profits or what have you good on you, get someone so that they can play your music better than you can. You can sing your music better than you would if you were playing it yourself and you will provide a better performance for the people who are coming to support you as an artist. So think about it that way. Don't think, I'm not giving enough if I'm not doing more. Okay. So just really think about all of the things that come into play as being a performer, a front person, a communicator of stories, singer of songs, you know, you're reaching out to the audience, you're doing all of that stuff. If you want to be control freak, go nuts on managing your business side of things. Think about your marketing, your promotion, making sure you're filling the venues that you're performing at. Go crazy with all of that. If you want to be a bit more hands on with stuff, if you can, if you're at that level in your, your career. Um, but yes, please don't feel pressure on yourself that you have to be the musician as well as the front person. Um, the landscape of this industry is huge. And these days, obviously, so many artists are actors or they're doing other things as well as that. So it's not just we're not just talking about musically. It's like, well, should I be pursuing my acting career as well at the same time? And then then it's like, oh, shit, now I've added an entirely different level to this. So there are a lot of um, actors, singer models like let's pile it all on, shall we? Um, so please focus on what you're passionate about, focus upon what your strengths are and really dig into those because that's where you're going to see the most success. That's where you're going to see the most trajectory and just you're going to enjoy your life more in general too. So don't put that pressure on you to do all these other things. On the other hand, if you've always wanted to try acting or if you've always wanted to try, say, modeling or whatever it is that comes up through your music that leads to other opportunities and it's something you've always wanted to do, prepare yourself, educate yourself, step into that role and give it a shot. Have fun. Again, only if it's something that is going to bring joy to your life. It's going to complement your artistry. It's not going to stress you out. You're not doing it because you feel like, oh, this other singer is doing stuff on TV or this other singer is hosting a show or this other singer is a model or whatever. Don't do these things that's going to take away from what you're really strong at, you're really good at, and you can kick ass at essentially. Um, so yeah, don't sacrifice any of that just to kind of keep up with what you see other people doing or what you feel you should be doing. I also want to dig in a little bit about the mental health side of that, because we do put so much pressure on ourselves. And what I see a lot is when artists do they level up, they get to a certain level, they're doing all this really cool stuff and then things start to feel like it's going really smooth or it's it's easy. Their job has gone from hustling and struggling to like, wow, people are paying to come see my shows or, or I'm being, I've got a manager now and people are organizing my life and here are like things start to streamline and you're actually living the dream. That's when a lot of panic comes in. It's like, am I worth this? Am I worthy of this? This is suddenly starts to feel easier. And it's not because you're being lazy. And I talk about this with vocal technique a lot too. When things become easier, it's because you're getting better at it or you're just really good at it. Okay. So if something is feeling really easy, things are going really, really smooth. Things are going awesome. Don't freak out and feel like you're being lazy or you're not contr contributing and 
contributing enough. Think about it like I'm just better than I was at this a year ago, five years ago, what have you. I have climbed up my own personal ladder of success. I am now here and I'm going to enjoy it and I'm not going to stress out because I'm not doing 37 other things that I feel like I should be doing because life is currently enjoyable. Okay, I've decided and I've declared for myself personally that 2024 is going to be the year of no donkeys. And by that, I mean, <laughs> let me explain. If you've watched any of my videos, you've probably seen many random animals walking about in the background or jumping on the piano. Uh, we basically have a rescue here. So we've taken on way too many animals, but I cannot say no when people are like, this goat needs a home or this horse needs a home. We have a lot of animals here on the farm. Very nearly got a donkey. Do you know why? Because everything was running really smoothly. Everything is manageable right now. We have uh, admittedly probably more animals here than we should, more animals than I had intended to have, but we got it under control. However, because it started to become under control, I'm like, let's throw a donkey in the mix. And then I'm like, no, 2024 is a non-donkey year. We're going to just cruise. We're going to enjoy what we have set up. And I <laughs> don't know how I just went from music to donkeys, but same with you and your music and your voice. We're not going to be pushing and adding more to your plate just because you feel you need to. You are enough as a singer. And if you feel as though you're not, if you're having a bit of imposter syndrome and you're like, well, I should be accompanying myself on guitar or I should be playing piano or maybe... There's you maybe you just want to lift yourself up more as a singer. Get some training. Do a coaching session. Give me a shout if you if you're feeling like you're not quite doing enough. Let's let's take your voice for a rip. Let's see where you're at. What you're doing. If we can add more to that side of things, without having to add an entirely new instrument to your day to day or to your show. Um, but yes, please do not sacrifice what you've worked so hard for as a singer by throwing in a guitar or a piano just because you feel you have to, fumbling through on that, losing what you've got set up in your voice and just giving a mediocre show or a mediocre performance, stick with, with what you're really good and what you're really comfortable at, unless you really want to. In that case, get the lessons, do the work, throw the extra donkeys on the farm and go for it, but only if you want to. Because if you don't want to, you are enough. I hope that helps. That was my little pep talk, a little bit of a pep rant. But anyways, hope that helps you. Let's break some stereotypes. Let's also take a minute. Oh, I don't know if I want to go here, but I'm going to go here. A lot of times with especially, uh, well, no, I'm not going to go there. I was going to say it's sometimes a lot harder for females than it is for males, but... It is what it is. Uh, keep kicking ass. Learn what you want to learn and excel at it. And uh, if you don't want to excel at it, just have fun doing it. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And if you do leave a review, it's really useful to help others discover the show. You can also check out the weekly vocal workout over on Patreon. I'll leave the links in the show notes where you can access weekly vocal training from yours truly and totally rock your voice. Thanks again for listening. Check out Rocket Vocal Studios on social and on the web. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.